This is CPE 133, and we were talking about comparators, and this is free range Verilog foundation modeling, chapter 9. So, this is the second lecture. So, the first part we were talking about just you know, comparators, comparators and important issues, but those comparators were inherently unsigned, and we actually need kind of the flexibility to work with signed and unsigned numbers. So, once again, here's the disclaimer you're not going to learn Verilog by reading about it or watching videos. You actually got to go do it. Fire it up, crank some circuits out. But here's the big overview. We're just, we're designing hardware. Essentially, we're going to write some models and have some software generate some real hardware from it, like such as the synthesizer. The important thing to notice is that the hardware itself has no notion of whether it's working with signed numbers or unsigned numbers. All the hardware doing, all the hardware is doing, all that underlying logic and gates and all that stuff just operates essentially on ones and zeros, which is voltage levels. It does not know, the hardware does not know whether it's working with signed or unsigned values. Essentially, you, the designer, has to put that, design that into the system such that it works correctly. Now, this is, you know, the tendency in these higher level modeling is to rely on the software and the operators etc to do all the dirty work for you and you just you can't do that in Verilog you kind of have to know what you're doing you can get away with it in program higher level programming languages because well they let you get away with it but we're designing hardware now you got to know what you're doing so our mission here is essentially work with the synthesizer such that we're telling the synthesizer to generate the correct hardware and that correct hardware is going to generate the correct answer no matter if we're working with signed or unsigned numbers so the approach we're going to take is is that there are certain rules that Ver verilog uses to deal with unsigned and signed numbers and you've got to understand those rules when you're designing circuits that are dealing with signed and unsigned numbers as well so let's uh let's take a look at these things so we're going to be dealing with signed and unsigned numbers and remember recall that the hardware doesn't know the difference of the the, the signedness of numbers and I like I like uh, using this word signedness I use it quite often I don't know if I've maybe I made that up or something but uh, numbers are either signed or unsigned so they have a a sign signedness attribute so the primary issues that we we need to deal with and what we're going to do is work with the synthesizer here is sometimes the synthesizer has to increase the bit width to get the answer um, typically that happens with when sign numbers are in expressions and the other issue here is sometimes we have to tell the synthesizer how to interpret a value so whether it be signed or unsigned and essentially those would be uh, not essentially like an equality operator not as as part of a uh, like an addition operation, not as not in an expression, we'll say. What you need to know is the rules for uh, how Verilog expands values, uh, also how Verilog handles signed and unsigned values and expressions, and then we have this little helper thing called typecasting. So these are the three things you need to know. They're very confusing. I mean, they're not. They're just. There's not that many of them, which makes it controllable. But uh, it's it's actually tough to. It's actually tough to understand, so I encourage you to, to think about this. So let's do this. So typically, the synthesizer is going to need to expand values, and, and we'll get to that next. So the way it expands values it, is, it, is it adds bits to the left-hand side of the value. So if you have a 10-bit value and you add 4 bits to it, it's going to be added on the left side, not the right side. So the way it adds these values are uh, according to the signness of that number. So if, if, you're, if that number is a signed number, it's going to sign extend that number to get those four values, which essentially means to get those extra values, it's going to replicate the signed bit. So if you're dealing with unsigned numbers, it's going to zero extend it, which means it's just going to take those extra bits and make them zero. So these are hard, hard, fast rules in Verilog. It's just to, when you have to add extra bits, it sign it, it, 
it adds those extra bits based on the signness of the number. So now we want to know how Verilog handles the sign and unsigned values and expressions. So there's a couple rules here. So first of all, uh, you have expressions full of numbers. So the numbers could be signed and unsigned. For for the expression, if you have a single value, single operand in an, an expression that is unsigned, that means all the operate all the operation all the operands are unsigned. Okay, another way to say that is if I have if I want to do like a purely signed operation, that means all the operands in that expression must be signed. Okay, so once again, if you want if you're working with signed numbers and you want to sign result here, you need to have every single operand in that expression. Both and that means both sides of the assignment operator need to be signed. So you have an expression full of operands. Those operands can be of differing bit widths. So what's first thing that's going to happen is the synthesizer is going to expand all all of the uh, I'm sorry it's going to make all of those those operands a the, the same bit width and the way it's going to do that is it's going to find the largest bit width and it's going to uh, ex, you know ex expand the the smaller the operands with smaller bit widths to have the same number of bits as the operand as the operand with the most bits. Okay, and then it's going to expand it once again. It expands it by knowing the expand the uh, signness of that number. So the important thing here is that for this first operation here, this uh, if you have a if you think you're doing if you think for example if you think you're assigning a value to a signed number. And you have an unsigned value in somewhere in that expression, it's not going to happen. So essentially, that the signness that that signed value is going to be the signness of that signed value is going to be overridden if there is an unsigned value somewhere in that expression. So once again, if you want a pure signed operation, you need to have all the op all the operands in that expression as signed. The uh, last issue here is typecasting, and there's uh, you use typecasting in in two places. Uh, essentially, when uh, you need, essentially, you, it gives you control over how the synthesizer expands a value. So it's if you have a signed value, it's going to be it's going to be expanded using sign extension. If if you don't like that, you can cast that as an unsigned number and then it will that synthesizer will expand it with zero with zero extend it so uh, once again the in any expression all the operands are expanded to the number of bits present in the operand with the largest number of bits in there that's hard to say anyway the other issue here is uh, oftentimes you're going to tell the synthesizer how to interpret a value and so this is really uh, an issue of you have a value like a a value inside a, com a comparison like a conditional operator and you you have you can tell if it's for example if it's a signed value and you want it to be an unsigned value you can cast it as an unsigned value typically we like working with unsigned values so we oftentimes find ourselves casting unsigned values and assigned values so then the the, in, the uh, synthesizer interprets it correctly so there's two ways to make uh, a value signed or unsigned in Verilog. Number one, you can declare it as a signed number. And so here's an example on the bottom. If you don't declare it, if you don't go specifically declare it as, an, as a signed number, it uh, defaults to be an unsigned number. And of course, the other control you have over signed and signed numbers is, is to uh, typecast it. So here's an example here of uh, using the, the sign designation inside a, inside a declaration and these are also declarations down here so these if I call it assigned if I use that sign word that's going to be it's going to be interpreted as a sign number this right here this is an unsigned number because it doesn't have the sign and this right here is an unsigned number also so keep in mind 
that uh, uh, it defaults to being unsigned. And I can use this for wires and reg types. And if you're a system Verilog person, it works with with uh, logic types as well. So we're going to do a couple examples here. And what I'm going to do is redesign this n-bit comparator. It's just a generic comparator. Um, it's a parameterized model. We're going to, you're going to, now it's going to be work for signed numbers instead of unsigned numbers. So there's two approaches to doing this and they're both, they're both pretty interesting. So here we go. This is, looks very much like the previous definition we did. Uh, the idea here is we've now parameterized it. Here's the parameter right there. That's not the fun part. The fun part is the fact that we've declared these two inputs as as sign numbers and that's all we need to do because after we do that these comparisons are going to work cor correctly uh, for for sign numbers now the issue here is that when it when the, this comparison happens it's going to it's going to consider the signness of those numbers when it does that comparison and because i've uh, compared uh, declared them as sign this is going to work so this is a a nice working model for a a signed comparator. Now, there's another way to do this. I, I, I mean, both ways work, and the point being is that you. I want you to understand that the previous example we did have sign signed values up here. Maybe you don't have that, and maybe you need to cast them. And so this is an example where same example. Everything's pretty much the same, except you know here's your parameter. Uh, we did not declare them as signed. So these are inherently unsigned values now. But to make the comparison happen, I, I need to uh, cast these values as being signed. Now this is going to make this from an unsigned comparator into a signed comparator. Notice I didn't cast the A and B because, um, you know, for the quality, it's not going to matter as far as whether the synthesizer interprets it as signed or unsigned. So pretty clever way to do it. Once again, this is a message to the, this typecasting here is a message message to the synthesizer to consider those values as not as they were declared, which is unsigned, but to, to consider them as signed, which is the way I've typecast them into. So that's it. Comparators, um, we uh, compare two values and it spits out some status regarding the output. Uh, we can compare unsigned and un or signed values, but we we have to model the uh, the code appropriately, whether it's being unsigned or, or signed. There is a big difference. There's a bunch of relational operators in v in Verilog which we freely use for designing our comparator, and so the notion of uh, signed and unsigned values in Verilog is it's kind of confusing. There's a couple rules that you need to follow to get it to work properly, and one of those rules, kind of sort of, is typecasting. So, and typecasting just allows you to have a number interpreted as something different than it was declared as, such as, you know, you can interpret a signed number as unsigned if you cast it to be unsigned.